is. All right. Um, so as it says on the um, on the screen there, um, this is for vending mastery um, because break breaking even is whack. How about that? Um, really, this is going to be for our event that's coming up December fifteenth. But we really um, hope that you use this information for other uh, vending events that you do. All right. So again. Um, our whole goal is, is for those of you that have participated with us before, you know, uh, hopefully you feel like we bring another layer or another level to our events and to the actual vending game. Um, we are going to continue um, raising that bar up. So with that, we want to make sure that we are giving you guys the information that you, you need, not only to be successful at our events, but to also be successful just in your businesses by themselves. So that is one of the differences that you're going to see with um, being an exhibitor with us, which is we do not care just about you giving us money and then you set up your table and then whatever happens, happens. That is not us at all. Again, our goal is for you guys to look at this event as far as like we're partnering together. So we are just as much um, vested in your, um, your success um, as you are. So with that, and, and one of the reasons we, we, we've, we've created this reason for this event for two reasons, one for the exhibitors and two for the attendees. So it is about, so you guys are, are half of this event. So it's really, really, uh, it's really important to us to we make sure that again, that at least this half um, is successful with that. So that's why we actually do these info sessions and training sessions before this, all right? So again, as we start going through this, if anybody has any questions, please, please let us know. Um, this is, you know, a consumer here where, where she looks happy. She just bought some things, so she's happy. So we wanna make sure that our uh, attendees are feeling this way. Uh, with the event being Taste Urban Atlanta, pretty much everybody at this event is coming to do business with Black businesses. So that's what their, their goal is to do. So again, this is an event that, that to highlight you, to spotlight you, to feature you. So um, we're very, very excited um, about that. See here. Um, for those of you that don't know, Corey Network King, my company is Pro Networker. Uh, obviously, we do um, several different networking events. We have several different events under our brand. Uh, Taste Urban, uh, Women Who Network, Network Urban is just one, uh, just a, a sample of some of those events. Um, our event manager is Angie Sims. She's actually going to be on, um, she's having some technical issues right now, but she should be joining us here pretty soon. Um, founder of League of Girlfriends. Uh, she's a powerhouse. She is just a powerhouse. Um, absolutely love Angie. Not sure if she just joined us. Somebody just joined us. Um, but again, you're gonna be hearing from her today as well. Oh, that's Dwayne Gibson just joined us. All right. Hey, Dwayne Gibson. Um, so I want to introduce actually a couple people to the team um, that are on here. Dwayne Gibson, he is the director of Taste Urban. Um, you'll see a lot of him doing some things with social media and stuff like that. Uh, so a lot of the posts that are done on social media, Dwayne is handling that, as well as some of our partnerships that we have with whether it's Eat Okra, whether it's My Black Receipts or whoever else we have. So Dwayne, thank you for being here today. And Miss Raquel Hill. Uh, Raquel um, is also a part of our, our team. Um, she is helping with some of our alliances such as the Atlanta Black Chamber um, and other organizations like that that are gonna be coming an urban CEO, um, et cetera. She also has a food blog that she does, helps with some content creation. So these are a couple members. We may have a couple other uh, members from our team join us, but again, um, we do have a team so that you guys will have some resources here for you. So real good. Let me get to the next one here. Da, da, da. All right. Uh, I don't know what happened to the V there. There it is. Vendor advantages. So um, the first thing is nearly 100% of people can claim that they cannot build long-term relationships without face-to-face -face communication. Face-to-face um, -face communication is so vital, so vital. 
And that is why uh, participating in these events are very, very important. The other thing I want you guys to remember, and obviously everyone that's on here, you guys are exhibitors, so you, you do understand this fact, but there is something that's called what, I, what we call the networking hierarchy, which is freshman year, you are an attendee to an event. Once you graduate from being a, um, a, an, an attendee, you go to being a vendor. Once you go from a vendor, you graduate to a sponsor. Once you go from a sponsor, you then graduate to a host of events. But really most people either get to that sponsor of an event or a host of event. Those are the two power positions. So again, um, and as you're going up in this hierarchy of networking, you're getting more and more advantages to it. Exhibitors have a greater advantage over attendees. There are some people out there that just say, no, I'd rather attend an event. Here's the reality. If you actually have an exhibitor table at an event, you have a little bit more credibility than an attendee does. You also have an opportunity over that attendee to where you have the ability to really showcase your items, obviously better than an attendee would. Um, and you also have more, more, you have more time with that person. Typically, when you have somebody that's walking up to you, you already know that they're somewhat interested in, in what you do, which is very, very different than the attendee experience. So if anybody ever tells you, hey, it's better to be an attendee than an exhibitor, that is 100% false. Um, it is definitely always better to be an exhibitor um, than it is to be um, an attendee. Um, let's see here. I'm trying to make sure see here all right um one moment i want to make sure oh she's having some issues let's see here uh, okay she should be joining in a moment um so with that i want to talk about event-based marketing okay event-based marketing this is something that is very, very, very important um, when it comes to marketing your business. Typically, when a person is marketing their business, they have, um, everyone should be familiar with the slow drip campaign, which means you can send out a newsletter, let's just say once a month um, to your, your database. What happens is when you do that, which is hopefully everybody is doing that. If you're not doing that, we can talk after this event on how you need to be doing that. Let me be very clear. If you are not sending out a newsletter to your contacts at least once a month, letting them know and reminding them what you do, you are losing money. I need to be very clear about that. If you are not sending out an, um, a newsletter or an email, that goes out once a month that reminds people what it is you do, you are losing money, okay? The reason why that is, is that it takes the average person seven to 12 plus touches for them to be able to like you and trust you enough to either do business with you or refer business to you. With that, in order to get those seven to, plus, seven to 12 plus touches, you have to have a mechanism that's doing that and that's where that newsletter comes in, all right? So with that, on an average, a person is sending out 12 um, emails a year. So one a month, right? So when you think about that seven to 12 plus touches that you need to get, it would take you a year to do that. Here's the beauty about event-based marketing is that anytime that you have an event that you can actually let other people know about this event, that's what's called event-based marketing. You're marketing the event, but you're really um, using kind of a, 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 a subconscious way of getting your name still in front of them, which still goes to that reminding people of what it is that you do. So event-based marketing is very, very, very good to do in your business because what it does is this. Let's say that you're sending out one newsletter a month. So you now have 12 touches in a year. But let's just say that you're now going to do an event at the end of that month. You can still send out your one newsletter, which is your one touch for the month. But because you now have an event or an announcement letting people know about something else, you could get away with sending one more um, um, email, two more emails, possibly three more emails because you're inviting somebody to do something. 
if you're doing that, you're now going from one email for the month to now four emails in a month. How that looks over a year, if you had something going on every month, you can go from 12 touches in a year all the way to 24, 36, sometimes 48 touches in a year. When you talk about that touching 12 times, it would either take you a year to do it or it could take you three months to do it. That's why, but the only way to be able to get that three months is by having something else that doesn't actually even pertain to you that pertains to them. And events are really good ways to do that, okay? Events are really good ways. So anytime that you guys are either hosting an event or that you are actually participating in an event. It is advantageous to you to market out this event because this helps you get more touches when it comes to your business, all right? We're gonna talk a little bit more about that in one moment, but I wanna show you guys this, um, how event-based marketing, one aspect of how to do an event-based marketing that would actually help you with this event. This part is really important. I wanna make sure that everybody understand how this works. So everybody should be familiar with our rebate program. Um, everybody purchases their table, however much their table was, whether it was 150, whether it's 250 or higher, whatever the case is. Everybody on this call, if you've already signed up, you should have received um, a flyer that looks like this on the left. Um, now the flyer, um, obviously, you would get a, a custom one. So this person is grandma's kitchen so that her logo is there. A picture of her food is in the background. Obviously for you, you will have a picture of your food in the background or whatever the case is, or your drink or your product or whatever. Um, and then it'll have your discount code in there. With this discount code is gonna be, the code is gonna be something regarding either your name or your product just to get people used to seeing that more and hopefully for them to actually use it, type it in and still sticking with your brand. Um, you'll get that flyer. The flyer is gonna have a $5 off. The tickets right now are at an early bird, which is $25 is gonna go to 35 and then it's gonna go to 45. So at this $25, um, a person that uses your code, so you send this flyer out to your database, um, a person gets it, they go to us and be very clear about this. If they purchase a ticket through us by just going to tasteurban.com, they're gonna pay more. So it's actually more beneficial for them to purchase the ticket through you than it is through us. We as Taste Urban, we do not have any discount codes. The only people who have discount codes are the exhibitors. So with that, it's more advantageous for them to purchase it through you than it is us. They purchase it through you, they will save $5, which they would pay $20. That $20 is gonna go 100% back to you, okay? Up to the price of your table. So let's just say that again, that your table was, um, let's just say it was $100. Uh, with that, you get five people to purchase it. You're now getting that $100 back. Why do we do this? We do this for multiple reasons. One, we want to help you have another thing as far as event-based marketing is concerned. Again, it is going to help. It's, it's what's called cross-marketing. Yes, we're going to introduce you to some of our people. We'd love for you to introduce us to some of your people. But the bigger people, why do we do the rebate program? We want you as an attendee, or excuse me, as an exhibitor. We understand that majority of you guys do not have an unlimited funds of marketing money, right? With that, anytime that you give us, let's say you give us $150 to exhibit. My goal is for you to not pay the 150. My goal is for that fifth, that 150 to come from your database, from people who want to attend the event. We are willing to sacrifice the money that they were paid, which typically would go straight to us, to give it to you. So that best case scenario, you rebate $150, you now have a free table at the event. And what that free table lets you do is now the first dollar that you make at the event, you're already in profit, number one. Two, for our next event, we say, hey, would you like to participate? If you already have $150 credit, then you're more opt to participate in, in that event again. 
So, and then what happens, just a news alert, the same people who used your code once, if they liked the event, they're going to use your code again. So with that, once you actually get your table purchase back, nine times out of 10, anytime that you do this event, you're going to have, you're going to be doing it for free. Okay. Now I will be very honest with you. This only works if you send it out. If you do not send this, your, your flyer out, we've created the flyer. We sent you the flyer. It is 100% up to you, whether you send it out or not. If you do not send it out nine times out of 10, no one's going to use your code. If you do send it out, you have the potential of somebody using your code. So with that, we want to make sure that you have this because again, I've been we've been doing events 11 years now. I don't I haven't seen many, if any other events that offer a rebate program. So with that, my suggestion to you guys is to take advantage of it. Uh, we had quite a few exhibitors uh, for the last event that did utilize the rebate program. Uh, we actually had about three of them that got 100% back of their table. So now their, their table that they're about to do right now is free to them. So again, now I wanna open this up for questions. I know that this is one of the, one of the big piece of the, the thing of tonight. Does anybody have any questions regarding this? Make sure you unmute yourself if you have a question or you can place it in chat. Real good. Data capture. Data capture is going to be super important for you at this, at this event. The reason for that is uh, this here. If you guys have not thought about what your, your customer LTV is or lifetime value, if you have not heard that or thought about that, this is gonna be a, an extremely important slide for you today. Your customer lifetime value is when you have a product and that person purchases it from you, most times say, hey, what's the value of a customer for you? And you might say, oh, let's say your product is $20. You might say, oh, it's $20. Well, that's actually not the, that's the price of, of one sales, but the lifetime value is going to be that $20 multiplied by how many um, how many times that this person is going to make a, a similar purchase um, in a year, and then how many years they would make that same product. So uh, we got, uh, I'm gonna use Roberta for, for a moment. Uh, she does candles. With that, the question is, on an average, how much are your candles? Let's call that number $20. Then the question is, well, how long does it take a person to go through a candle? Let's say it's a year. Then the question is, well, how often do you think that they would actually be purchasing a candle? That person may purchase a candle 10 years, uh, one a year for 10 years, one a year for 20 years. So now that 20 times 20 is 400. So a person's value is not just $20, it's $400, all right? And this doesn't include if they actually refer somebody because then that number goes up even more. So if you haven't looked at it like this, you want to look at it like that, the customer lifetime value. Now, the only way to get that, and what that means is you will make more money after the event than you will at the event. So I want to make this very clear. The monies that you make at the event, great, but do not let that be your focus. We need to shift minds when it comes to this. The money that you make at the event that, is, that should not be your focus. Your focus should be the money you make after the event because the money you make after the event is gonna be larger. There are people who are gonna come to the event that are gonna purchase your product right then and there and may or may not purchase ever again. There are people who are gonna come to the event who may not purchase your product, but may be a lifetime customer with you after the event. Both of those things are going to be scenarios are going to be pretty much up to you. And how that is done is by data capture. You have to make sure you're capturing their data. And when we say data, what does that mean? Well, I gave them my social media handle. No, that is not data capture. Data capture is you getting their um, first name, last name, email address, phone number. Those are the things that you want to get. If you get their social media handle, that's not going to help. If you give them yours, that's good. 
but that's not data capture. They're capturing yours, but you're not capturing theirs. You want to make sure you have a way to capture their first name, last name, email address, and preferably phone number so that you can start pushing out information that's going directly to them. That is important for data capture. That's important for the follow-up after the event. Again, follow-up after the event is where you're going to make the majority of your money. But if you do not do this correctly, then again, you're not gonna be successful when it comes to this. So our goal is to make sure that everybody that participates in our event, that again, they're coming into the event thinking the right things. Those right things are, yeah, if I make some money at the event, great, wonderful, gas money, whatever. But the bigger piece is how many data captures did I get? How many people am I able to follow up with um, after this? And do I have a mechanism to follow up? Is my uh, email newsletter campaign ready? Do I have um, text message marketing ready? Which if you guys do not have text message marketing and you think that it'd be beneficial for your business, let us know. We have somebody a part of our team that actually does text message marketing. So with that, we wanted to make sure that everybody understood customer lifetime value and how important it is to follow up after the event. Any questions on that? Again, if you are on mute, make sure you unmute yourself. Want to make sure that everybody's understanding this. Real good. Well, I'm about to introduce Miss Miss Angie. Angie Sims, she's going to be talking about how breaking even is whack. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Corey, did you, am I co-hosting? Am I able to move the slides? Uh, you know what? I don't even know how to do that. Okay. <laughs> oh, do All I right. just make you, make you co-host? Yeah, well, just, just make me co-host. But I don't know, because okay. it's on your machine. I might, I'd probably have to share it myself. No, he, you have to request access. Okay. Well, I have to go we're going to do it. We're going for this one. We're gonna At the top, it says view options. Scroll down, okay. request remote control. Say it again. At the top of your screen, you should see view access if you take it out of full screen. Oh, you're, are you on a mobile device or computer? You know what? We're not going to even worry about it. We're going to go old school. So Here go we ahead. Go. I, I, no, no, I just requested it. Let's see what okay, happens. There we go. Okay, y'all got it too. Gonna, Flash, flash. Okay, I can control your screen now, Corey. Oh, you in for it. Hey, you guys, thank you so much. Thank you guys so much. And Corey, thank you so much um, for your patience. I am at my son's basketball practice. So, you know, we entrepreneurs make it happen wherever we are. Super excited to be here with you today. And yes, breaking even is wiggy, wiggy, well. I want to talk to you a little bit more about how we can do more than just break even. Because when you come to an event, an event um, you should not say to yourself, oh, as long as, I've heard this so many times, as long as I make my money back, I'm good, right? But you're actually not good, right? You want to make sure that you are above and beyond whatever it is um, your goal is, but that means you got to set a goal first in order to go beyond that. Let's see if it's going to let me go. So one of the first things I want to talk about is portion size. Now, this is the taste of urban Atlanta, which a lot of our vendors are going to be food vendors. And some of you that have products and services, you may, or products at least, you may also want to give a sample away, right? But we want to make sure that you are um, having an appropriate portion size. And we'll talk about this a little bit more. But what we don't want is for one person to give a nibble away, a nibble of a piece of cake, and then another person right next door give away a whole half half side of a cake right so we want to make sure that we are controlling our portion sizes and that they're appropriate for a tasting which means you have to plan 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 um, and i'm going to say throughout my portion of this presentation that i am happy to talk to anybody that's a vendor uh, on a one-on-one -on -one basis to help you magnify your vending experience at this event let's see if i can slide to the next slide no i can't Corey, can you take me to the next one i got it okay thank you the table must haves we're going to talk a little bit about some of the things that you should have at your vending table. I'm going to ask you a question. Is this your table? 
figured I'd just put the messiness on. Does your table look like this? A lot of times what happens at Vindy's events is that we figure, oh man, there's gonna be 300 or 100 or 50 impactful people, or there's gonna be 500 people at this event. So I wanna make sure I put everything I have, even some stuff out of my own closet on my table so I can sell it all. But ladies and gentlemen, that is not the way that you've been. We're gonna talk a little bit about ways you can be uh, unique and you, some ingenuity you can use to make sure that you are still making money after the event and also really having a great experience yourself and allowing your guests to have a great experience. Okay, so first thing I want you to consider is getting organized. That table before is not where it's at at all. And nobody really wants to come to that table. So ask yourself, would you rather go to have a shopping experience at Neiman Marcus or uh, Macy's where things are nice and organized? Or how about for us girls, Charm and Charlie? Who here didn't love Charm and Charlie because everything was color coded and it was so easy to go in there and find a yellow scarf to match your yellow earrings, to match your yellow shoes, right? So get your vending things organized. Color code them if you can. Maybe you match up styles. Maybe if you have shoes, you match up the heels and then put the flat somewhere else or maybe you put the leather products over here and then maybe you use things that aren't so traditional right so i keep telling when i'm doing events with people i keep on expressing the fact that we need to get away from the six foot vending table we really do in some cases you do need a six foot vending table but in some cases you don't need a whole table i'm gonna give you a perfect example my girlfriend's on here joy stokes Joy doesn't, she uses, she needs like a high boy table, right? Because what Joy needs is to market her products, but her product is the thing she's showing you. She's going to have her joystick right set up there so you can see her product in full living color. She doesn't need to have a table full of stuff just to say she got a table full of stuff, right? So I want a lot of you guys to think about if you have a product or a service or a food item, maybe it doesn't have to be on the traditional six foot table, or maybe you have your space and your six foot table is actually behind you, right? And I'll show you some unique ways to do that. Or maybe use a high boy table as such joy does. So here's an example of a table that looks pretty good, right? So they've got their branding out there, right? Tell them, Joy, you don't need a six foot table. They've got their branding out there. They have lips to show you this is what their whole product is, something to satisfy your lips, right? And you see how pretty they have their uh, lip glosses or lipsticks. It's nice and orderly, nice and neat. So it's appealing. It's drawing somebody in because it's, it's really clear and concise what they offer by their branding. And guess what, guys? Their stuff on their table matches. So it's not like, you know, they got pink over here, purple over here. It doesn't confuse the eye. What you want to do is not confuse the eye. Listen, we're all really simple people. We just want things clear and concise, especially, and no shade on men, but shade, no men, shade, no shade. Men are not going to come to your table if there's a whole bunch of stuff on there. Sometimes women will because they'll be interested, right? But if you want to, uh, whatever customer you're trying to attract, you have to make your table appealing for that. Perfect example. Say you sell something for trucking. If you sell something for trucking, even if your branding is pink and you're trying to attract men, you're not going to have a table full of pink stuff because the first thing that's going to happen to men is they're going to think that's not for me. So they're not going to come over to you. So it's really important to have a table that's organized. Let me show you one more example. And this happens to be one of my members, uh, Pam Hope. She went all out, guys. So her, you can't see by this tent, but her tent is actually branded with her company name on it. Her banners are branded. She has a spandex tablecloth that is also branded. And she has a tent there and another a table tent as well. So you can't get away from her branded. I'm going to tell you guys what I tell all of my clients. If you had somebody that was driving down, say, Route 75 or Route 85, and they went past their billboard, they've only got three seconds three seconds to capture your brand, which you want to be in the business of, I'm in the business of brainwashing people, just so y'all know. <laughs> I'm in the business of brainwashing people. When you see the League of Girlfriends logo, if you know me, you'll see the League of Girlfriends swirly colors. You can go to Pakistan and see something that says legal garments, right? And you will think if it's the same color as my brand, if the words are swirly, you will automatically assume, because you're familiar with my logo, that it's League of Girlfriends, just like the Golden Arches or the Swoosh. You can see those things anywhere around the world. And even if it's not that specific brand, you will think it is, because what have they done? They've brainwashed you. So it's really important that you let people know what your brand is, see how her essentials is really unique to her and everything in her environment is the purple and the white colors as well as she has some really unique ideas there she got some juices on the table and she has them in a metal bin so you get a country feeling you get a feeling of wow this is something that's healthy for me because it's reminding you of all the day and real quick um if you guys do not have a retractable banner if you look at the picture on the left side if you do not have 
a retractable banner for your business, please put that on your to get list. Um, whether it happens for this event or whether it happens for another one, retractable banners are very use, uh, very uh, use of tile, is that a word? To where you could actually use them several places. I have gone with mine and thought me we were gonna, I've been to events where I thought I was gonna have a table. I didn't have a table, but I'm still able to put up my retractable banner. Um, it's hard for you to put up, like if you have a banner to try to put it on a wall or something like that, the retractable banners are such eye-catching, very, very eye-catching comparatively as far as the costs are concerned, they're comparatively low. Definitely something, again, if you do not have that in your business, you definitely wanna make sure you do have that in your business. I want to say one more thing about that banner before you switch the uh, page to Corey is that listen so we are all taking selfies everywhere we go what I love to do I love and we'll talk about engagement in a second I love engaging with future clients right or with people that I'm going to have collaborations with I absolutely love engaging with people what I do a lot of times I ask people to take pictures with me next to a banner everybody wants to take a picture Everybody wants you to take their picture. So imagine if you had them take a picture with you next to your banner with their phone, yeah. right? That's going to be in their phone. They're going to have your logo. They're going to remember you were so sweet to ask to take a picture with them, right? And then they'll remember your brand. Okay, we'll move Huge. on. And we do have somebody, a part of the team, that if you do need help with designing a banner and getting the banner, we do have somebody, a part of our team, that can help you with that. Love it. Love it. Okay, so other things that you can consider, always, please always, 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 always have a tablecloth and a tablecloth that touches the floor. This is my pet peeve. I've been an event planner for 24 years doing events all over the country. Um, and it's really important to me that your tablecloth touches the floor, right? So just make sure that you are, your table looks as professional as it should look, right? Because you don't want a table that's sort of looking not as professional as it can be because those are the clients you're going to attract are probably if you're looking at everybody else's table and they've got it going on and yours doesn't, folks will go right by your table no matter how good your product is. They just really, really won't pay you any mind. One thing I want to say about this screen too is that this is an actual vendor. This is an art vendor. But you see what the art vendor did? They used a piece of their art as the backdrop instead of having a six foot vending table a piece of their art and they're telling people, hey, let me take a picture of you in front of my beautiful piece of art. Because then that person goes home and they see that picture says, oh, this might match something in my wall. Maybe I'll give him a call and come back and get that picture later on. You also, candy is a good trick. I always use candy. I always put candy on my table because everybody at a place always wants candy and they'll come past your table to have a conversation. I'm gonna go ahead and give y'all a little tip, especially if for those of you that have food, then your food is gonna be your draw. But for those of you that don't have food, if you don't feel like your product is as a draw, what Edge just said, Candy, uh, when I was marketing my tax business, y'all y'all know how sexy taxes is, right? Super sexy. Everybody was flooded at my table. <laughs> I have made a ridiculous amount of money just by having those mints at my table and not just any mints, the, the, the puffy ones, the ones that melt in your mouth. Oh, yeah. I have made a ridiculous amount of money just because somebody would look at my table and they'd say, oh, taxes, oh, I don't want to go there. But they'd be like, oh, a mint. Oh, can I have a mint? And I'd always say, hey, take a mint, take a card. And all of a sudden, I start having conversation with them. You would, candy is such a big thing at an event. So thank you for that, Angie. Yeah, it's huge. Okay. Okay, so listen, I love it. So once your table is where you want it to be, and guys, this is just the beginning. We're not giving you all the tips we can give you. And again, I am here. I would love to talk to you one-on-one -on -one about how you can really make your table absolutely fabulous and unique and set apart from anybody else, right? But once that happens, you can listen to the wows. <laughs> love it. Okay, so making money after the event. So I started this off by saying that it is imperative that you think beyond the cost of your vending space. So whether whatever the cost is that you invested to have a vending table here. Listen, I don't know anybody that sells vending tables and then give you your money back. I don't even know where that happens. I don't know what's wrong with Corey or why he's doing that, but y'all should be great. I'm tripping. <laughs> I'm <laughs> but even but even though um, you are getting your money back, the key is to make money after the event and ask yourself, how are you going to do that? There's lots of different ways to make money after the event. We'll go to the next slide. Engagement. First of all, before you can even think about how you're going to make money after the event, you have to ask yourself, what do you want to do at the event, right? 
no sit and we'll have the do's and the don'ts in just a second but engagement 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 gone are the days when you are sitting at a vending table waiting for people to come and greet you who does that guys you want to be engaging i don't even think you should sit down i'm gonna tell you that um Corey's giving you money back and he give you seats that's way better than me because let me tell you what i don't do i don't give you seats when you come to my event sorry right because you should be standing the events an hour, two hours, three hours. Is it, if you can make a couple grand at a vending table, what the heck are you sitting down for, right? And why are you on your, I've gone to vending tables and people are like this on their social media and somebody comes up and they hope somebody don't come up. <laughs> Hoping somebody, and when they didn't come up, they say, oh, oh, yeah, this is mine. Yeah, all this is mine. And, that, and nobody says nothing to them. They say, okay, and they keep on going back. How are you going to make money unless you are engaged? Engagement is so crucial. Stand and, and hope somebody walks within your six to 10 feet square or even use it at somebody else's table. Have conversations with people. Start off with a smile. Engagement is more about more than just what you say to people. It's the aura that you give off before you say anything thing to them. So you should be welcoming them with a smile. You should be so excited to share your product or service or food or drink with somebody. Boy, they are so lucky they came into your space. And that's how they should feel. So you should engage people with their eyes before they even come over, right? And then when they come, hey, how you doing? I'm so glad you came by my table. Uh, listen, one thing I do that really works is that I compliment people a lot. And I don't really compliment something. So I'm not I find something I do like. There is no way I walk past somebody. There's not some. She's kind of breaking up a little bit. Um, and what, what, or I may hear him saying something to somebody else, huh? Oh, go ahead. You you were uh, you were freezing. Keep going. Oh yeah. So I'm saying you should compliment something about somebody, or just start engaging people by a conversation. Find something. I tell people the same thing when you're doing like interviews. You have to connect with people. The sooner you connect, the more likely you'll be able to engage with them after the event. And you have to be able to ask the question, well, so say for example, you're selling cupcakes. Girl, you know that Christmas is coming up and I know you're probably gonna cook for your family. Oh, my grandmother's actually cooking. Oh man, wouldn't it be great if you gave your grandmother a piece of my pie and told her, oh, this girl thinks hers is better than you. Let me just show you how good it is and give your grandmother a pie right? So you have to engage people. Every single scenario is an opportunity. Every engagement is an opportunity to build relationships after the event. So after you do what Corey said and you collect their contact information, and I'm going to tell you, Corey, that the open rate for text messages is 99%. So if you're not sending text messages, you ought to be sending text messages and not one a week, not two a week, every single day. Do you think people are going to get tired of you? And they, the people that get tired of you will opt out. But if your stuff is good enough, they won't get tired of you. They'll be looking for the next one or laughing at whatever you have. So engage with people, get their contact information. But the most important thing you could do is welcome people with a smile so that they feel like you're open to have a conversation, right? And then we'll talk a little bit more about what, um, uh, what you do next. So let's go next. Let's see here. Okay, so here's some of your do's, right? So make a plan and practice. Listen, guys, I've been doing vending events for probably 30 years now. I'm telling my age a little bit. But every time I do a vending event, you know what I do? I create a vending event in my house first. I set up my six-foot table, and I got lots of decorations because I'm a wedding event planning. But even if you don't, even if you went to the dollar store and bought a little bowl for your candy and the candy from the dollar store and a little doodad, and you have your tablecloth and just a few little shelves, make sure that you practice and plan for your table or your space. I'm, I'm going to stop saying table. Plan for your vending experience before it actually happens and practice it right you can also do use different things look around your house and see what you have that allows you to put things on different levels because it's difficult if you come to somebody's table and everything's on the same level and you're reaching over reaching over create an experience where people feel like they're coming into a shop right and that goes beyond the, again beyond the six foot table you might have a little stool at home or a little chair at home or you might have rug put the table behind it and put the experience in front of it so people feel like you're welcoming them into your space but always always practice and plan for it beforehand take an hour or two and play makeup table or whatever it is right bring a helper it's really essential that you bring at least one person i really recommend two Corey. i don't know how many people you let them have but 
especially those of you that are bringing food and liquor, because you do want to have the experience where one person is giving out the, the samples or maybe the samples are there available and there's a whole other person handling the actual transaction of it. Listen, as the owner of your business, you have to take ownership of your business. I'm going to say it one more time. As the owner of your business, you have to take ownership of your business, meaning you should be the front man, you should be the front woman. So even if the person, your helper is behind the table, making sure people get their meals or whatever it is, or, or selling the products to them, doing a transaction, you should be the welcoming face. Hi. Yeah, I started this product. I started this company because my grandmother or my mother or my father or because my daughter. Give them your story. It's relatable. They don't want to do business with you. Uh, more so after that. Okay, design a table that attracts. We talked about that. Engage with your guests. We talked about that already. Make an offer for later. If you don't know what your offers are, I'm your girl for that too. And I'm sure Corey got some other folks in his people in his, in his area that can help you. If you're not sure how you can take your product, your service, your food, and your drink beyond that event, beyond selling a, a cupcake, right? Then let, let's have a conversation about that because everybody has an opportunity to have a greater experience with your clients after the event. Um, but make sure you make an offer for letter. Collect contacts. Corey talked about a good way of doing that. You can either have a sign-in sheet. That's the way everybody does it. Or you can have raffle prizes and games. There's lots of raffle prizes and games out there that you can buy from Party City for $10 or something that will engage people. Oh, write your email address down. Then you can win a buck. Something super simple. You know, so raffle prizes and games is a good way to get contacts from people. And here's the thing, guys. When you go to a vending event, you should absolutely, this is why you need a helper, make sure that you engage with the other vendors. If you're a food vendor and you make uh, collard greens, you might need somebody to make jerk chicken. Or you might need somebody that makes cakes. Or you may need somebody that sells whiskey. Engage with the other vendors. Spend some time stay from your table, walk around, see what everybody else is doing. You might pick up some tips for your next event, right? But make sure you engage with the other vendors. Her, um, it's breaking up again, but I'm actually glad that we were talking about this. One of the things that she talked about with the, with the do that's on the sheet, which I'm so glad she had that's on here. I've been exhibiting at events for several years, several years, right? And I wish that somebody had talked to me about how to do this properly. You should not, if you have been doing this in the past, then you should not just come to the event, set up your table, wait for people to come to you, figure out how much, you know, what you got, and then break down your table. You should not be doing that. This is an active, active um, environment for you. So that's why it's super important to one, make a plan and practice. It might sound elementary, but for those of you that have a good looking table, then okay. But for those of you that don't have a good looking table, um, Angie said something really good. Go to Hobby Lobby and grab a little floral arrangement. It, it doesn't, $10. Put that on your table to make something better. I told you guys I had a tax table and I wish that I, I, I should have put flowers and stuff like that, but I put candies. But put something on that table, like I said, practice it. But the bigger thing is make sure you bring somebody with you so that if while it's busy, you can act as if it's not busy because you guys are getting through people and stuff like that. But when the things slow down, the owner of the table should be interacting with the other vendors. That is huge. I have had a couple, I wish more, but I've had a couple exhibitors come to me and say, yeah, just like Angie said, yeah, I made desserts. I went to the person that made that didn't make desserts. Yeah, we just uh, made a plan together. We're gonna start doing business together. We're gonna start doing collaboration together. That is huge. Or even you being able to walk around and engage with some of the attendees. Hey, what are you eating? Hey, did you like this? Did you like this? Whatever the case is, huge. And that uh, lastly, that make an offer for later. That is how you actually can start making the money after the event. Hey, you're at this event right now. I have this buy, buy, six, buy six, get six free. That's for a later order. Um, I'm selling a gift card today. Buy a gift card for $5, but you'll get a $15 value. Something to where that $5 or $10 is not a financial um, a financial decision for them, but
but it's not high enough to where they'd be like, well, no, I'm not going to do it. Well, shit, it's $5, $10, why not? And giving them that value there, that's how you're actually looking at uh, working this. So, yeah. Can you see me, Corey? Can I you guys see me? Yep. Okay. So I put in the chat too, make sure that you brand yourself. Make sure that you wear a t-shirt or if you're selling cupcakes at apron or something that has your name on it. So when you go to the bathroom or when you go visit other people's table, they'll say, oh, I can't pass your table. I didn't get a chance to talk to you. So maybe you can have that conversation then. So what we don't want you to do is we don't want you to wing it. Don't show up and somebody, it's so funny. On one of our meetings, somebody said that one table looked like somebody had just thrown up on it, right? We don't want that, right? We don't want the table example I showed in the beginning, right? Don't just sit behind your table. Matter of fact, I encourage you not to sit behind your table at all. So if you have a, if you have to have a six foot table, put your chair on the side of it or use your chair for your pocketbook or for something else, but don't sit in it, right? Uh, you don't use your, use your devices, excuse me, and ignore your clients. Don't have a cluttered space and don't miss the opportunity for future money. Awesome. Um, these are some things that I want you guys to, to think about of having at the event, just some kind of last minute things. Um, this is going to be an encouraged cashless event. And we say encouraged, which this is gonna mean there's gonna be people who's gonna still have cash. Make sure for your business, that if you're going to be selling a product at the the business at the event, that you have either the app of Cash App or Venmo um, ready. You have it would be even better if you had the QR code for the Cash App or the Venmo print it off and have it on one of those um, eight and a half by eleven plastic displays that actually sits up on the table. So somebody can see it right there. They can actually scan it with their phone and be done there. Now you are going to have some people, we are on our side, going to be letting the attendees know, hey, please um, download Cash App, download Venmo, but there's going to be some who don't use Cash App or Venmo and they're going to use cash. So you are going to want to make sure that you bring change for cash. We are going to have some at the front, but we definitely want to make, we were not going to have enough for everybody. So with that, if you forget it by chance, we may have some for you, but you definitely want to make sure that you're bringing that. I highly suggest that if you are a business that does take cash, you probably should have like a cash box. I typically, with our cash box, typically already just keep $20 worth of cash and, and ones always in there. So never take it out. So it's always in there. If I just forget to go to the bank or whatever the case is. Um, again, those pre-orders, those pre-orders are going to be important. If, if you guys have something to where you're not even thinking about pre-orders, so some people are going to be selling, uh, like, so for instance, our caterers, it's harder for a caterer to get business than it is for uh, a baker uh, because people are used to walking up and buying a cookie right there on site, but they're not necessarily used to uh, buying, you know, uh, let's say meatloaf or whatever the case is like that. But the beauty is the holidays are coming up. So obviously our event is going to be after Thanksgiving, but the next holiday is going to be Christmas. There's a lot of people who don't want to cook for Christmas. There's a lot of people who don't want to cook for New Year's Eve. There's a lot of people who don't want to cook for New Year's. There's a lot of people who don't want to cook for their anniversaries, for their birthdays, for whatever the case is. So these are the things that you want to think about to see what occasion, and here's where that data capture comes in and that follow-up newsletter, what occasion would somebody use me? Now let me actually present that at the event. Let me actually have some, some, um, some information on that at the event because I have to plant that seed to them. They're not gonna be thinking about this. You have to plant that seed for them. So that's how you can start getting these pre-orders. And I want you guys to think about this. If you have to plant the seed to somebody about a pre-order, they're nine times out of 10, not going to order from you right then and there. So if you tell somebody, hey, listen, um, I can do your, your, your Christmas cooking. They're like, oh, you know, I never thought about that. That's an option. So now you've planted the seed. They're open to it, but they're pretty much not going to buy, do an order right then and there. But it is possible for you to say, hey, well, listen, I'm selling these gift cards today. You buy it for $5. It's a $10 value. So if you do decide to do it, you're already saving money on it. If you don't decide to do it, then you can do it later on. They may do it. They may not. But if they did, that's now an extra $5 that you've gotten as far as revenue for a pre-order is concerned. 
you'd give a timeline, hey, it's good for 90 days. So with that, you now have put that sense of urgency on them. And again, worst case scenario, they don't do anything. Best case scenario, they actually give you $5 and that turns into a larger order later on, all right? So these are the things that you guys want to think about. Also having special sales for those of you that are really good with cash and carry. Hey, listen, I normally charge this, but for today, you buy it now, you get it for this price, right? Uh, we talked about the data collection newsletter. Again, that is that slow drip campaign or that after the event once a month. Um, social media, making sure that you have your social media um, handles and stuff like that printed out so somebody can look at it very quickly and start following you or whatever the case is. Do, do, do. And that is it. So we're going to now open this up to some questions. Does anybody have any questions? We, I know we went through quite a bit of stuff. I haven't was able to look at the chat, but does anybody have any questions uh, regarding anything? You can unmute yourself. Or does anybody have any comments? Was this good for, for people? Did, did anybody learn anything? Hi, this is Rosetta. Um, yeah, I've learned a lot um, so far, especially dealing with the, uh, um, you're saying about uh, for later, you know, doing the orders, ordering for later, I think it yep. is. Yep. Um, I think that was, I've actually learned a lot that I didn't realize I needed to know um, <laughs> for my own business. And when it comes to obtaining um, like, you know, emails and contact information, I think um, had I seen the importance of it when I initially started, I probably could have been further along than what I am, but Hey, you got I realized it too. Yeah, it. so I'm I'm <laughs> grateful for that. Um, and I know I need to probably work on engaging more with customers and even like with the emails. I think that was an eye opener for me. And now with the text messaging and the stuff like this, I think that will definitely be beneficial. Good, good. And I met uh, Rosetta at uh, the women's event, the women's expo. Uh, this past weekend, which again, thank you to Joy, Miss Miss Joystick for doing that live so that I can actually learn about that. Uh, but again, it's always important to, and, and Rosetta, honestly, no matter when you hear about it, the important thing is that you heard about it now and you now start mm -hmm. putting things in place uh, to, to grow your business with this. So good for you. Thank you. Anybody else have any questions or comments? While we're on, I want to introduce Miss Kaden, Miss Kaden Web Girl Jacobs to the group. Kaden is the one that actually handles our website um, for Pro Networker um, as well as Taste Urban. So for any of you guys that have any website needs, Kaden, please make sure you put your information into the chat. Um, Dwayne, make sure you put your information in the chat. Um, Raquel, make sure you put your information in the chat as well. Um, again, if any of you guys have any questions regarding um, this event, you're going to be getting more information. We are going to um, have another one of these events, uh, I believe December 1st. So again, if you would like to actually even get some more information about that in on this again, you have the ability to do so, okay? Good, do we have any other questions? We've got somebody who just joined us, Sean C. Sean, what business are you with? I'm with WaterPass, um, a water delivery company that delivers water to your door. Wonderful, yes, yeah, so I'm so glad that you're, you're part of, uh, you're participating with us. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Uh, I thought it was at seven. I ended up coming a whole hour late, so I apologize about that. But you think there's another one on the 1st of December? Yes, we're going to be doing another one on the 1st, December 1st, which is a Wednesday, December 1st, um, same time, 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. Okay, and then we will be making this, um, uh, we have recorded this, so we will be making this available as well. Awesome. Real good. Nobody has any other questions. So maybe, maybe Angie, we just went through this pretty thoroughly. Maybe that's what it is. Nobody had any questions. 
<laughs> All right. If we ain't got no questions, then okay. Uh, but look at the time. Ain't that look? Hey, Angie, we we professionals, ain't we? This ain't our first time. Is <laughs> this is this is Wonder Twin Power at its best. That's what I'm talking about. Well, listen, guys, we're super excited to have you. Um, I cannot stress enough, and Sean, with you just joining us, I cannot stress enough uh, for you guys to go ahead and start sending out um, your flyer that has your code on it. Let people know about that. Um, again, the tickets right now are at $25. Um, with your code, it's going to uh, give them $5 off, which makes it 20 the 25 is only going to go for the first 50 people that sign up for the event. So with that, after that, it's going to go to $35. So it's going to go to um, that. Where do we get our code? Joy, I need to get you yours. Okay. Um, so I'll, I'll put that information to you for that. So, um, but with that, um, definitely make sure that you start getting that out. All right. Because again, the, um, our goal is for you to get have a free event for this. Also put on your calendars, uh, February is gonna be our next event after this. So after this, our next event is gonna be in February. Uh, within the next week or so, you guys are gonna be getting um, setup information on what time setup is, what setup is at three, um, and setup um, instructions and all of that. So you guys will be getting that uh, here momentarily, all right? Well, listen, y'all, same location. Yes, we, uh, we are looking at um, uh, the founder as being, uh, being our home as of right now. So, yes. All right. Awesome, y'all. Well, listen, we truly appreciate everybody being on uh, today. Again, if you have any questions, uh, reach out to us, let us know. And other than that, we'll go from there. All right, y'all. Have a great day. Bye-bye.